A common assertion that arises is that the universe came from nothing. This thought at first seems quite fascinating. Could it really be that the universe emerged from the depths of nothingness? How strange, beautiful, dreadful, and mysterious may that be? The idea that life was a mistake sprung out of blind indifference is genuinely exciting to some people. But once we get past the poetic mist, the question becomes a thoroughly flawed one. What really is nothingness then? Most of us understand nothing as black, empty space, I would imagine. It may surprise you to hear, however, that black, empty space is, in fact, very much something. Nothingness, properly understood, is literally the absence of all things. Matter, energy, space, potential, and even causal states altogether. If a person genuinely believes that something comes from nothing, then that person is affirming that states of affairs are capable of coming into existence without matter, energy, space, potential, or even prior causal states. But is this belief really reasonable? After all, science itself is predicated on the principle of sufficient reason, PSR for short, which states that everything must have a cause or reason for its existence. If this principle holds true, then how could the universe emerge from sheer nothingness without some prior state of existence? It seems, therefore, unreasonable to affirm such a position, because from nothing comes nothing, not something. To put it another way, being cannot emerge from non-being. There must be prior causal states, conditions, or existence to even allow for the possibility of anything at all. It is also worth noting that if there really was nothingness, then how would this moment exist? So in other words, you can think of it this way. If there really was truly a time of nothingness before the universe, then there would always be nothingness. There would never be anything at all. No universe, planets, laws of physics, persons, consciousness, and so forth. Now that we understand what the nature of nothingness really is, you may find it very surprising that the universe from nothing claim not only comes from untrained atheist laymen and skeptics alike, but even from a notable theoretical physicist and cosmologist named Lawrence Krauss. Krauss wrote a book called A Universe from Nothing, in which he attempts to address the perennial question raised by the German philosopher Leibniz, who asked, why is there something rather than nothing? Krauss, in his confident and witty character, affirms that it is totally plausible the universe came from nothing. But, as expected, Krauss's nothing is very much something. He has merely redefined the word nothing to mean something. In the divine reality, God, Islam, and the mirage of atheism, the Islamic philosopher Hamza Zorsis exposes Krauss's semantic gymnastics. He wrote, Krauss's nothing is actually something. In his book, he calls nothing unstable, and elsewhere he affirms that nothing is something physical, which he calls empty but pre-existing space. This is an interesting linguistic deviation, as the definition of nothing in the English language refers to a universal negation. But it seems that Krauss's nothing is a label for something. Although his research claims that nothing is the absence of time, space, and particles, he misleads the untrained reader and fails to confirm explicitly that there is still some physical stuff. Even if, as Krauss claims, there is no matter, there must be physical fields. This is because it is impossible to have a region where there are no fields because gravity cannot be blocked. In quantum theory, gravity at this level of reality does not require objects with mass, but does require physical stuff. Therefore, Krauss's nothing is actually something. Elsewhere in his book, he writes that everything came into being from quantum fluctuations, which explains a creation from nothing. But that implies a pre-existent quantum state in order for that to be a possibility. Zorsis articulates the cognitive dissonance behind Krauss's claims. In Krauss's research, his understanding of nothingness appears parallel with the opening presentation of Nothing I Provided and Zorsis' definition of nothing as a universal negation. Though Krauss's book is highly dubious, 
Is he genuinely confused or intentionally misleading others? Is this book title mere clickbait? We may never really know, but what is important is that we do know that something emerging from nothing is spurious banter and has no foundation in science. For example, a scientist would never observe an explosion in a chemistry lab, and after tirelessly thinking about how it may have happened, he or she claims, well, it must have just occurred out of nothing. Let's look at another example, one that you may have heard of before. Some scientists claim that virtual particles pop into existence out of nothing from a quantum vacuum. The reason this claim is advanced is because it supposedly demonstrates that out of nothing comes something. However, a quantum vacuum, as by now you probably could have guessed, is not nothing. Instead, it is a field with a low energy level that fluctuates and behaves in certain ways. In addition, it possesses properties that can be actively described, whereas nothing literally possesses absolutely nothing and cannot be described. The only time we posit that something can come from nothing is when a discussion emerges surrounding why anything exists at all. In any other context, however, we would not apply nothing when trying to explain a given phenomenon. In short, Lawrence Krauss is disingenuously conflating nothing with a prior quantum field or something. In reality, there has never been sheer nothingness. There must be something that always is, or nothing can actually become anything at all. It is important to remember that science is restricted to the physical world. Questions about nothing, causal states, existence, being, change, potentiality, and actuality are metaphysical, not scientific. The question of existence, and I really want to stress this, does not concern itself with the internal arrangements of the physical world or its causes, but with how a cause or an arrangement or anything at all can exist in the first place. Even if a scientist like Krauss wishes to speak about why there is something rather than nothing, do know that once he does such, he has entirely fallen outside of his scope of expertise. The duty of a scientist is to deal with what can be observed, not to speak about metaphysical matters. Now, I'm not suggesting for a moment that scientists and philosophers should not work together. Historically speaking, science, philosophy, and religion have always worked together to foster a better understanding of reality. But contemporary scientists, especially ones like Krauss, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Richard Dawkins, and others alike, are very much ignorant, at times enormously ignorant, when it comes to philosophy and discussions about God. Therefore, we need to be intellectually honest and stay in our own lane when necessary. If scientists like Krauss remained in their own lane, we would not face such misinformation, confusion, and strife when it comes to philosophy, science, and religion. Perhaps if Krauss sought to be intellectually impartial, he should have titled his book A Universe from Explicitly Something. <laughs>